My name is Joe Peroni, and this is the Rise Above Project. And today, I think I have an interesting show for you. And I think it might trigger a few people along the way, but that's just the way it is these days. Today, I want to analyze the supposed epidemic of angry, lonely, single men in this country. And I want to take a look at it from a few different positions. Number one, I want to use data. Data obviously is very important, therefore I'm going to use a good amount of data to support some of my ideas. However, I also think it's important to take it from a philosophical point of view, and I also want to use some of my own personal views. And the reason for that is because I am now Generation X, I am 57 years old, and what I have noticed as I have gotten older in my life is that when I see people such as uh, Generation Z or the Millennials, when they start talking about things and they start talking about things that have happened in history and they weren't there, I start to look at it and I go, well, a lot of this is wrong because I actually lived through it. So I don't know where they're getting their information from. You know, that's the first part. And the second part, when I hear that there's an epidemic of angry, lonely guys, I think that they're talking in real hyperbolic terms because they want to get their subscribers and likes and all these things. And they're looking for people to click on their shows. And I think it gives a very, very false narrative of what's really going on, especially if you were to talk to people who come from those earlier generations. I think one of the first questions that we have to ask here when, again, let's pose the question right up front, like, is there an epidemic of angry, lonely, single men these days? My first question is, were men always angry? Like, when did we start judging this? When did we start surveying this? When did we have podcasters and YouTubers talking about this, the people from the manosphere? who are trying to siphon the, the money out of a lot of young men's pockets for no reason. They're saying things to give them something angrier, right? To, they're gonna boost up their anger, but they're not helping them at all. Well, let's go back to the beginning. I'm a 57 year old man. I can tell you, being born in 1965 and even starting kindergarten by five years old in 1970, I was an angry guy. And I went through most of my life angry, and I still kind of do. And I talked to my father about this at a very young age. Lo and behold, my father, angry. He talked to his grandfather, mm-hmm, a level of anger. And so being it's not just our family, it's every single man that I've ever met that's successful, do has, they do have a level of anger. And I don't know if you always want to call it anger, but I would say angst, because they just don't feel good enough even when they are good. And I'm not saying that this is an insecurity. It's not an insecurity. It's the matter of, at the end of the week, if you have all your bills paid and you open up your refrigerator and it's filled, you feel good. But you still don't feel good enough because you definitely wanna make sure that your family's taken care of. And so you always wanna have excess above the excess. And you wanna be able to say, okay, I'm happy and I'm healthy, but how can I be healthier? And how can I be more valuable? So there's always a level of angst. And where is the anger? The anger comes in is because if you are a conscious human being, what happens is that you completely understand that in a capitalistic country, people you don't know and people you do know and people you don't like and people that are friends with you, they're all competition because we're going for some jobs that might be the same. I know a lot of people who are therapists. Hi, how are you? How are you doing today? Blah, blah, blah. We can all be friends. But in the end, in the back of my head, I'm saying, I'm getting this job. I'm going to do better than you. I'm going to hold clients better than you. My clients are going to have better outcomes than your clients. And that's the way it is. And I'm going to fight for that. And the only way you fight is by having a little bit of anger stored up to say, I'm going to protect me. I'm going to protect my virtues and values, and I'm going to protect the values and virtues that my parents gave me and my grandparents gave me, and I'm going to spread them to everybody else who loves me and cares about me. You have to have a chip on your shoulder. 
by today's standards, they don't understand real masculinity. And so and then we get into this thing. Now, there might be a difference in anger. In terms of the anger that I see from young people today, it's uh, an anger that's really interesting. It's anger without enthusiasm. It means that they're just depressed. They sit around smoking marijuana and just playing with themselves all day and they say, I'm angry. That's not real anger. If you were really angry, you'd get out there and go for it and do better. But they don't. They're actually depressed. So depression for them is, again, there might be anger, but it's aimed towards themselves because they don't have any confidence to go outward for the things that they want. So what they do is they go on all these social media outlets and they try to say, I'm a sad, pathetic person. I have no testicular fortitude. I have no spine. I don't have uh, two eyes that look forward because I want to go forward and do better. What I want to do, I want to have these roving eyes all over the place because I'm scanning the world for problems and I'm scanning the world for excuses that I can make. And so they're not being real men. And so we confuse this because Generation Z and the Millennials haven't seen anything different. So they don't know what they're talking about because they haven't seen they need more experience, but they don't have it. 99% of them have never worked a job as a teenager either. By the time they work their first job, they're in their 20s. Then they get told what to do by a boss and they flip out. And we talk about them being angry. Who cares? They need to get stronger. That's the problem. Here's another question, because I keep hearing this too from a lot of young people. Uh, once again, if I haven't mentioned it, I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. And I've also been a personal trainer for about 35 years. So is life harder for men today? It's a good question. Again, if you're Generation Z and you haven't seen anything or you're a millennial, you're going to say, yeah, life is harder today for men than it ever was. Why? Because you're in it and you don't know how to understand that there are other people who lived in the world, right? So you just say it. Um, but I'm here to tell you, I don't care if you have a million subscribers and you make a lot of money off of YouTube selling fake garbage. You're wrong. Life is pretty easy today can, compared to what it used to be. The crime rate in the 60s and 70s was massively higher than what it is today. Massively higher. It's so, it, it, right now you're basically living on gold paved streets compared to what was going on in the 60s and 70s. You should know that, so stop complaining. Again, grow a spine. In continuing with that, I've had a couple of clients, young guys, going, you don't know what it's like. There's 5% inflation. What, am I dead? I pay 5% inflation too on things. I buy things, right? But <laughs> here's the thing. Yes, inflation's a problem, but inflation is very interesting today, in the year 2023. It's, it, it's an economic discussion, so I don't want to get into it too much. However, what's balancing off the inflation of today is the fact that wages are going higher for your average worker. Now, if it's not going up higher for you, I feel bad for you and I have empathy and sympathy. I understand. However, overall, what's happening is inflation is higher, but wages are now going up. So that's not as much to cover it, but it's still going up. So let's talk about the 1970s, though. In the 1970s, inflation was about 5%, but it kept rising for over a decade until it, it capped off at about 14% in 1981. 14%? If the inflation was 14%, every single guy in America that's a Generation Z or Millennial, they, they would commit suicide. They wouldn't know how to live with that. But it was a normal thing for a decade in the 70s to, to have inflation at about 14%. And here's the negative part of that, even though that's incredibly negative. There was something called stagflation because wages were stagnant. Wages were not going up for that whole decade. They were down or they just stayed neutral. Why? Because it wasn't being pushed by a great economy like we have now. That's why. What happened was that there was an oil shortage multiple times multiple times. 1973 was one, the other time was 1979. In 1979, and I remember this, if you're Generation Z, you don't know what I'm talking about, so don't talk about it. And the same thing with uh, millennials, you don't know what I'm talking about, so stop making decisions 
based on things you have no idea about. But back then, you couldn't even go to a gas station. The, the oil was so bad, there was so many shortages that if you had an odd or an even to start off your license plate, that would determine if you could go to the gas station that day. And when you went, and I did go with my father or my mother, you would be there for three hours waiting in line. See if you can handle that today. I dare you. And then you tell me that life is so hard today. Meanwhile, you're, you're contacting your friends like this on a $1,000 phone. Most families back then in the 70s only had one car, and that one car cost less than $1,000. I don't want to hear it. You need to grow a spine and grow some testicles. It's time. Somebody's got to tell you. The other thing that's interesting here is a lot of these younger people, they don't want to go to work at all. And one of the reasons that they use is because they just, they don't feel like they're appreciated and they're not going to get paid enough money. All right, fair enough. Join the crowd. I don't know of anybody that works in the United States that feels like they get paid enough. But you got to start somewhere and you got to start moving up the ladder. How are you going to get experience if you're just sitting on a couch? You're not. Sounds like a lot of entitlement. Now, there are a lot of people in the manosphere, in this uh, dark web, whatever they call it, this misogynistic anti-woman attitude that we're seeing. Again, the epidemic of angry single guys. And they tend to lean towards being conservative Republican. And if that's true, why are you complaining about not being appreciated? With, your, with the salary that you get. Because you're, you're supporting a political party that's, they're, they're anti-labor and they're pro-business. Therefore, what's gonna happen is they don't care about you, you're just a commodity. Let me explain commodity just for a second. If you're trying to sell, for example, a tie-dye t-shirt with the who on it, something really cool like this, if you make it and it costs $20, in order to make any money or profit, you're gonna to have to sell it for at least 40. You need double. Now as a human, being a commodity, when you work for somebody, if you make $20 an hour, you're gonna to have to do about $40 of work for your boss in order for you to continue working there. Your complaint might be is, I'm not appreciated and I'm not getting paid enough for what I do. Well, you're right because you do about $40 of work, but you only get paid for 20. But that's what capitalism is. Your boss is the one that takes on all the risk, and your boss is the one who gets all the customers. So until you are ready to take on a risk, meanwhile, you have to develop a nest egg of money, or you have to go borrow money, which is a risk, until you're willing to do that, and then to go hit the streets in order to get more clients, until you're willing to do that, you need to be quiet. Do your job. You're a worker. You're not a boss. And so you don't have the right to say you're not appreciated. It's your boss who's not appreciated, right? Actually, it's a little bit of both. But again, this narcissism and entitlement is not a good look on young men. It's a terrible look. Let's continue with some data. As we speak right now, there are 7.2 million able-bodied men that are 25 to 54 years old who are not looking for work. Now in the United States, we're doing amazingly well. We're very prosperous. There's only a 3.5% unemployment rate. And what that means is, of the, all the people that are looking or seeking to get a job, Almost all of them have jobs. They're able to find employment. Only 3.5% have been, unfortunately, they can't find a job just yet. So it looks amazing, right? Historic lows, everything's great. We have more jobs out there than there are people. So what's the problem? Well, part of the problem is, is that of that 3.5%, that's only one-fifth of the problem, four-fifths of the problem. Or you could say 
400% higher is the amount of men that are able-bodied, that are not working in the labor force. So if you times that 3.5 by 4, you're looking at about, what, 16% unemployment rate that's being forced into the United States by young men, or let's say prime age men, just quitting and not working. One of the interesting things here is, is that I would say that, that part of that is, again, are they angry and lonely and single? Well, it's possible that if they're angry, lonely, and single, that they drop out of society. That's true. But isn't it also likely that if you have a victim mentality and you have learned helplessness and you lack a spine and lack testicles, that you just don't push yourself to do any better and you start to see women around you who live the same life as you, but they go up the ladder and they go to college and they do well and they get jobs and there you sit on the couch playing Call of Duty, is it possible that you just don't like yourself and at that point, then you drop out of society because you would rather lose by sitting on a couch than lose by trying, right? Then you could just say, well, I'm just so smart. I don't get involved in the day-to-day -day things of the government. I'm out. I'm much smarter than that. They can't meet, use me as a pawn. But here's the thing. That problem is a problem of prosperity and richness. Why? Because somebody is supporting them. We'll get to that in a second. What are these freedom fighter men that are sitting it out because they're just not appreciated? What are they doing all day? Well, self-report, we know. Turns out that for 2,000 hours per year, they're using screens, meaning they're playing Call of Duty. Uh, I don't know, I'm a man. I don't know video games. I mean, what video games are they playing? What, what else do they have? Call of Duty, what else? Um, Fortnite, they're playing Fortnite. Okay, 40, 2,000 hours a year. So let's divide that, right? Let's say we have 50 weeks a year, that makes 40 hours. They literally are playing video games 40 hours per week. They gave themselves a full-time job playing Dungeons and Dragons, whatever the heck they're doing. But they have a full-time job playing video games. What else do they do? They're using drugs more along the lines of marijuana. I mentioned uh, Woodstock before. Let's talk about Woodstock again for a second, so I'm tying all this in. People during the Woodstock generation would smoke marijuana, but they did it in order to get socially connected to other people and to get socially connected maybe to the world and to be free. I, I kind of get it, even though I don't do that kind of stuff. But it was a thing that you did with people because you love being around people and you wanted more connection. What we're seeing here with people doing marijuana and other drugs is that they're doing it in isolation. And what's happening is they're forcing themselves to shrink their brains. They're forcing themselves to be angry, lonely, and single. So they're doing it to themselves. Let's look at the third thing that these men do. Now keep in mind this is self-report, <coughs> meaning that you think you might be a little bit embarrassed by some of this, so you're gonna lower the numbers a little bit or just fudge the numbers in some way. But if so, I would say that if they're saying that they're doing 2,000 hours per year playing video games, it's probably more. And if they say they do drugs for most of the day, it's probably all of the day. And then they say, well, they masturbate a lot. Hmm. So they play video games, play with themselves. Basically, they do nothing. Let me tell you what they don't do. They're not going to school. They're not retooling themselves to be better people, to be valuable. That they're not doing. They're not taking care of kids. They're not taking care of elderly parents. They're not volunteering. They're not going to the gym to care about their health. And why did I, did I give you those? Those are important and part of the data. Why? Because there are women who also are in their prime that are not going to work. However, they are going to school, and some of them are taking care of kids. 
and a lot of them are taking care of their elderly parents, and I'm very happy about that. And a lot of them are also volunteering. So what do we see here? We see women are doing everything. 7.2 million men are doing nothing. And then we're saying that we have an epidemic of lonely single men. Maybe that's not the epidemic. Maybe we have an epidemic of women who are raising their standards. Maybe that's the right headline for some of these Gen Z and millennials they should be saying. Because doesn't it seem like that's the way it should be? Yeah, that's the way it is. Let's take a look at another important stat. Since 1980, men without college educations have had a 17% decrease in wages. In addition, since 1980, men with a college education have had a 20% increase in their wages. So that's a massive difference. It's about 40%. So if you're a man or a boy listening to me, or you're a mother and you have a, a son, what did you just hear? You heard that college education is extremely important. And one of the reasons why men are so angry and lonely today is because they're not making as much money as people used to do a long time ago, or men used to do a long time ago. Men used to be able to get away with the high school diploma and still make a pretty decent wage. They can't anymore. They were not able to look forward, to see into the future, to be able to figure out what to do, and they paid the price heavily. Now, so if you go into the manosphere and you go into, I'm not going to name any names this week, but a lot of guys who are trying to help out these boys, supposedly, or young men, what's their solution? I'll tell you what their solution is. Their solution is do not go to college because it's too expensive. You don't want to have to pay it back. Let the women pay their student loans back. Okay, how's that going to work for you? Let me tell you how it's going to work for you because we already know. Here's the truth. If you earn yourself a Bachelor of Science degree, over a period of lifetime earnings, you will have $900,000 more than a person who just has a high school diploma. $900,000 is a lot of extra money. If you move on and you are highly motivated and you get a master's degree, over a period of lifetime, a lifetime, your earnings will be $1.5 million more than a person who just graduates high school. That's a lot of extra money. So why would you listen to any of these dark web manosphere uh, guys or these supposed male relationship coaches that are like 25 years old or 30 years old that haven't done a flat out thing in their life other than screw little kids over financially? because none of the data works in their direction. Let's continue with this. There's typical men's jobs in the United States that if you get these jobs, you're going to do well. Why? Because there's a need for them and they also pay, they pay, they pay well, let's just say that. And these are what we call STEM jobs and they are in science and technology and engineering and math. These are great jobs. I don't care if you're a man or a woman, you should look into these jobs if it's your interest and it's something that you think you have an aptitude to do. Because number one, you will get paid. Number two, there's, I mean, yeah, they're steady. And number three, over the next, say, five to 10 years, there's gonna be a 15% increase in the need for those jobs. So that's a good thing. Let me tell you something else that's even better that men don't wanna hear, especially in the manosphere. There's what's called heel jobs, which is generally considered to be women's jobs. These jobs are health, education, administration, and literacy. Now, a lot of men don't want to go into those fields. As a matter of fact, they say in the next five years, if we look at psychologists that are 30 years old and under, there will only be 5% men. 95% of the psychologists under 30 years old are going to be women. So if you're a man and you're listening to me right now, don't you think that that might be something that you should do? It's a six-figure job that once you get that job, you can always have that job. You'll always be needed. And you're going to have no competition as a male in that field. Okay, stop saying it's a female field. It's not. 
these heel jobs should not be gendered. It just so happens that they kind of are. Uh, men can be nurses just as easily as a woman can be into science or math or be an engineer. I don't know why we keep trying to gender this. We live in such an immature country. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So again, in the next six years, which is right around the corner, this is happening fast, there will be three heel jobs for every one STEM job. So what does that tell you? It tells you that we're becoming more and more of a feminized society in terms of jobs. There's gonna be more jobs, let me go over it again, in the health field. Let's just start with that. Me as a licensed marriage and family therapist, most of the therapists are women. Someone would say, well, this is a, a, a feminine profession. Yeah, why? That makes no sense. Because what's gonna happen is everyone who goes into graduate school and they start learning about therapy and psychology, every single person that they work with, whether it's Aaron Beck, whether it's Carl Rogers, whether it's Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, go down the line, uh, um, Mnuchin, whoever, 99% of the work that is learned or that you have to study in order to be a therapist is gonna be the work of men. Psychology is also based off of philosophy. Socrates, Aristotle, Plato, Marcus Aurelius, Zeneca. I mean, go down the line. It's man, man after man after man after man. So why a man would be so afraid to get into therapy because a girl can do it makes no sense. Because men are great at therapy. Men pretty much, uh, the whole syllabus that you have to learn in order to be a psychologist or a therapist is all the learning that you're gonna do it is gonna be from the work of men. That's the way it is. I think Virginia Satir is probably the only woman I could think of that studied in college. And she's amazing, by the way. I, I really love her work. But that's, that's another story. So what's my point? If you're a guy listening to this, don't be afraid of heel jobs. You should be looking into them. Look and see the future. Don't listen to these manosphere guys that are telling you, number one, not to go to college, and number two, if you go to college, only use these STEM jobs because you're gonna be on the minority again. Again, for every one STEM job, there's gonna be three heel jobs. So think about that. That's gonna be your path to not being angry <laughs> or lonely or single. So let's take a look at this again. Uh, I'm gonna do this real quick. We're all, already up to 28 minutes. Anger. Angry men at the core, they tend to feel inferior, uh, and they should. They did it to themselves, and now they have to pick themselves up, but now they're getting too much support from other people who have a benefit in keeping them down, because they, they make money from their despair. These people, they don't feel like they measure up, and they can't stand modern-day competition. Allah, what does that mean? It means they don't like women you know, on the workforce because they're pushing them. Because now that women can get jobs and they don't need men to pay for their stuff, women's standards and priorities move up. I'm going to talk about that in another show. The lonely and single part, it's pretty simple. When you're a man, you're supposed to be a man, not a boy. Nobody wants to take care of you. Nobody wants to think that you're a dependent. If a woman has a son, she doesn't want a full-grown man being a son. She doesn't want to take care of you. You have to bring something to the table, and it can't be that you go pick up a homeless girl and say, well, I have a job, don't you like me? Or you have these women that stay with you just because they need you financially. Women don't need you financially anymore. Therefore, you need to have other skills, and the thing is, by dropping out completely, you have no skills, and that's the thing. So, like, why are you lonely and single? Well. It turns out that women are not interested in angry, uneducated, stoned gamers whose only goal is to play with their penis 24 hours a day. That's the bottom line that you need to hear. So you need to pick up the pace. I, I watch a lot of these Manosphere shows and they're like, don't tell me to man up. 
Don't tell me that I have to get better. Okay, then don't. <laughs> then don't complain that you're angry, lonely, and single and desperate. Because you do have to get better. Who do you think, women with college educations or a beautiful woman is gonna be, wanna go, be with a guy who has no experience other than playing Fortnite? Like that makes no sense. That's embarrassing. It's totally embarrassing. On the next show too, I think I wanna do about our straw man arguments because a lot of these guys, such as these Manosphere followers, they want to blame female teachers. They want to blame dating apps. They want to blame uh, women's higher expectations. They blame everything except for looking in the mirror and doing something for themselves. Hopefully this show has been beneficial to you. My name is Joe Prony, and this is the Rise Above Project. Thank you.